tuning in to Gracie Music today. As we're not able to physically host our events due to the coronavirus outbreak, this year we've taken the opportunity to adapt and extend so that we can virtually host not just one but a variety of sessions brought to you throughout the whole day. This way you can access and interact from the comfort of your own home. As the name Gracie abbreviates, we work with grown-ups, early years, in community, and in education. So for today, our virtual sessions and events will cater to all. For our grown-ups and community, we'll have some sing-along sessions. Our children from the early years sector can get creative with musical stories, where they can learn to make musical instruments and also sing along to favourite nursery rhymes. To continue with music education, beginner learners can plug into our music theory bites and piano focus sessions. To find out more about our sessions and times, please follow the link below. But for now, enjoy! Introducing Music Theory Bites, online digestible music theory lessons that you can learn in the comfort of your own home. Gain access to unlimited resources including audio files, video files, downloadable files, as well as online quizzes and questionnaires. Don't stop the learning there. You can submit any of your work to gain feedback from our music teachers. Find out more at gracymusic.co.uk Start your learning today!
Today we're going to look at how we write down music. I'll give you a brief introduction to musical elements such as rhythm, note symbols, time names and time values. But first of all, let's look at rhythm. The dictionary defines rhythm as a strong, regular repeated pattern of movement or sound. With this in mind, certain notes in music can be held for a long amount of time. and others can be held for a shorter amount of time. Listen to the song that I'm about to play. Can you hear the different rhythms? Try and clap along with the rhythm. The main part of the song changed between short and medium sounds, known as notes. And then at the end, it finished with a long note. Rewind the video to listen again, see if you can hear more. To show how long notes should be held for, we draw them in different note shapes. These are called note symbols. Each note symbol has a different time name. Let's take a look at them individually. Here we have the crotchet. It has a time value of one beat. This simply means that if I'm playing a piece of music, I'm going to count and hold the note for one beat every time I see this particular note symbol. Let me show you. Here we have four crotchets lined up to form a crotchet rhythm. This time, try and clap along. Next up, we have the minim. Here is the minim note symbol. The minim has a time value of two beats, so I'd need to count and play the note for two beats if I saw this symbol. Let's have a try. One, two, three, four. The semi-breathe has a time value of four beats, and its note symbol can be easier to remember as it's similar to an oval. One, You've heard a rather long note, and now I'll show you a shorter time name called the quaver. This is its note symbol. The quaver is a short sound and lasts for half of a beat. Sometimes you may see two or more quavers being joined together like this. It does not change its time value. Each quaver is worth half a beat and is played separately. One and two and three and four and... Notice how I added more to my counting by using the word and in between each of the numbers. This is really handy when playing quaver ribbons. Pause this video and try it out yourself. Now, to recap, let's look at all the different time names, time values, and note symbols we looked at today. Can you practice reading your own rhythms? done you've finished this lesson but don't let the learning stop there for today only you can download the accompanying resources for this lesson completely free 
go to gracecmusic.co.uk forward slash make music day resources and download your copies right away. You can also share with us any work that you do relating to today's learning. Hashtag Gracie Music, hashtag Music Fury Bites, hashtag Make Music Day. Next up, we have the notes on the stave. Today we'll take a first look at how we write notes on the stave. I'll give you a brief introduction to musical terms including pitch, the musical alphabet, the stave and the clef. First of all, let's look at pitch. When talking about pitch in music, pitch is the word we use to describe whether a note is high or low. Some sounds or notes can have a high pitch and others can have a low pitch. There are also many different pitches in between. Now, imagine a large orchestra playing a piece of music together. With so many different high and low pitches available, and so many different instruments playing together, the orchestra could end up sounding confused or even terrible if they didn't know what notes to play or when to play them. So how do so many orchestras and musicians play comfortably together without sounding horrible or confused? Many do this through reading music notation. This is reading notes from the musical alphabet placed on a stave. I'll break it down for you right after this musical interlude. Just like we have the English alphabet that helps us to read and write words, stories and more, there is also a musical alphabet that helps musicians to read, write and play music. The musical alphabet is formed of seven letters that repeat over and over again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Each letter represents a musical pitch, so instead of just saying the musical alphabet, you can sing it or play it. You can imagine the letters being on a never-ending flight of stairs, which you can walk up and down. This represents the different pitches of the musical alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. No matter what instrument you learn, you'll always be able to play the notes from the musical alphabet. Listen to the notes A to G on the guitar. Now on the violin. And now on the piano. We've heard and understand the musical alphabet, but how do we write this down? We write notes from the musical alphabet on something called a stave. 
The stave is made up of five parallel lines. Notes from our musical alphabet can be placed on the lines or in the spaces, but each note has an assigned place. Just like our musical stairs before, the higher the note is on the stave, the higher the pitch. And the lower the note is on the stave, the lower the pitch. We'll revisit the musical alphabet in a later lesson, but now, let's look at the clef. If you didn't notice before, there are only five visual lines on the stave, but so many more pitches available. For example, the piano has 88 different pitches alone. To cover all the pitches, we place a different clef symbol on the stave to show us which particular notes or pitches to use. The clef symbol tells us which note is represented by each space and line of the stave. The most common clef types are the treble clef, the bass clef, the auto clef, and the very similar tenor clef. We'll take a look at each of these clefs individually over the next lessons. So use this time to soak up what you've learned already with a recap. We now know that pitch is a word used to describe whether a note is high or low, and that there are many different pitches. We know that the musical alphabet is formed of seven letters, A, B, C, D, E, F and G, that repeat on and on. We also know that notes from the musical alphabet are written on the stave's lines or spaces, and that different clefs tell us where to place particular notes on the stave. The four most common clefs are the treble clef, the bass clef, the auto clef, and the tenor clef. We'll find out more about clefs very soon. That's all for now. about how we write music. We looked at the note symbols for quavers, crotchets, minims and semibreves. 
Our keywords included note symbols, time names and time values. Today, we'll take a step further and look at note rests. Each type of note, for example a quaver, a crotchet or a minim, has a matching note rest that has the same value. Note rests are musical symbols that tell us when not to play and when there should be a silence in a piece of music. So now let's take a closer look and discover the note rests for crotchets, minims and semibriefs. First up, let's have a look at the crotchet note rest. We already know what the crotchet note looks like and that it has a time value of 1B. Here we have a crotchet note rest, which actually tells us to be silent for 1B. Let's see this in action. Here we have four crotchets lined up to form a crotchet rhythm. What would it sound like if I replaced the first crotchet with a crotchet note rest? One, two, three, four. Or if I replace the second crotchet note with a crotchet note rest? One, two, three. What about replacing the third crotchet note with a crotchet note rest? One, two, three, four. And finally, if I were to replace the fourth crotchet note with a crotchet note rest? One, two, three, four. Could you hear the different placements of each of the silences? Here we have the minimum note again. We know that it lasts for two beats. This is the minimum note rest. It also lasts for two beats but tells us to be silent for two beats. Let's replace the second minimum note with a minimum note rest. One, two, three, four. Now let's replace the first minimum note with a minimum note rest. One, two, three, four. Could you again hear the different placements of the silences? Lastly, we have the semibrieve. The semibrieve lasts for four beats, and this is the semibrieve symbol. This is the semibrieve note rest. Both the semibrieve and the minimum note rest look very similar, so it's important to look very carefully when you're trying to read or even draw them. A good way to identify the minimum note rest is to remember that it looks a little bit like a hat. Now, back to the semibrieve rhythm. We'll have a semibrieve note followed by a semibrieve note rest. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Before I finish, let's have a recap of the note rest we looked at today. The crotchet, the minimum, and the semibrieve. Each and every musical note that you ever come across will have a matching note rest with the same time value. We'll look at more of these in the near future, but for now, can you practice reading your own rhythms? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, Two, three. Pause the video four. and have a try on your own. That's all for now. do we have lined up for you today? At 11.30am, pianists of all ages and abilities can get their fingers warmed up and ready for the day during our piano finger sessions. At 12.30, grab your pretend mic and get loud and proud in our sing-along sessions. And at 2.30, it's just for the kids, we have our Musical Stories Creation Station where they'll be able to learn how to make some musical shapers. And to end our musical day at Gracie Music, plug in to the Let's Talk Music podcast from 6.30pm.